Um, any opportunity to discuss sexual and domestic violence in this house is a good thing. For too long, victims have had to suffer in silence and fear as the state and our society have failed to recognise and respond to these crimes. However, each time I raise the same points as do other deputies. So until we actually address the underlying causes rather than just talk about them, victims and survivors will continue to suffer in silence. Two weeks ago, like other deputies have outlined, we found out that over 40% more people contacted women's aid last year compared to 2019. This trend is also reported by West Cork Women Against Domestic Violence who have experienced a similar increase in calls. Campaigners and support organisations had warned us that this increase was going to occur. That same week, we discovered that over 3,100 emergency calls made by domestic violence victims to 999 were cancelled between 2019 and October. This is particularly alarming as victims on average are assaulted up to 35 times before reaching out for help. Highlighting and discussing these matters is important, but without substantial policy change, more people are being and will be condemned to sexual and domestic violence. One of the key uh, measures the government can take is to provide sufficient refuge space, and the teacher just said there in his opening statement that Tusla are undergoing a review of accommodation. Uh, one of the things I have repeatedly raised in this House is our obligation under the Istanbul Convention to provide one refuge space for every 10,000 people in the country. And instead of meeting that international standard, the Minister and Tusla have insisted on the way lesser provision of one refuge space per 10,000 women. That's 50% of what we should have. So while I welcome the review, I don't think we need a review to tell us that at the very least we need 50% more uh, refuge spaces at the moment. The continual refusal of the state to put in place the minimum amount of refuge space undermines any strategies and casts doubt and commitment to help those in need. It is essential to note that for anyone affected by domestic violence or intimate violence, um, there is always support and alternative accommodation out there, um, often thanks to voluntary services filling in the gaps that the state isn't filling. But if you are in this, that, that situation, um, do seek help and it is there for you. Refuge space is one part of a complex issue. Safe Ireland's No Going Back report outlines the transformative response required that considers the intersectional factors and an integrated approach. Domestic and gender-based violence has emotional, uh, psychological, financial, physical and many other interconnected manifestations. An adequate response needs to reflect this complexity. We need government departments and state agencies to understand the issues involved and provide exceptions and supports. In rural areas, it is often GPs or family resource centres who have to assist victims. They need more support, training and funding to deal with these issues. We need to ask ourselves, are staff and public services trained to assist victims? Does our immigration process protect vulnerable migrants whose status depends on their partner or family member? What systems are in place to detect less visible cases, such as elder abuse or financial abuse of people with disabilities? Each of these indicates some of the complications involved. Campaigners have repeatedly called for a dedicated minister with reach across all relevant departments and agencies with which survivor um, may in interact and a cabinet standing committee. We need this leadership to drive the necessary transformative change to provide integrated support, on the ground specialists and preventative strategies. When will we see this leadership? Sexual violence overlaps with domestic violence, but is also an issue that needs a targeted response. Research from Trinity and Maynooth University has established that 49% of women and 19% of men have been sexually assaulted or harassed, with almost 15% of Irish adults having been raped. These are deeply worrying figures, especially when the true figures are realistically an awful lot higher. In 2019, over 14,000 contacts were received by the Dublin Rape Crisis Centre National 24-Hour Helpline. However, there was only 3,307 offences reported to Gardaí in 2019. The prevalence of sexual violence is seriously underestimated. The realities of rape trials in Ireland report has highlighted um, the issues with, with our justice system's response to sexual assault. Delays with cases taking years have a significant impact on those involved. The use of so-called sexual experience evidence, although rare, is completely unacceptable. And unfortunately, social understandings of consent and pre-existing biases and rape myths are found in our juries. I welcome Minister McEntee's move uh, towards reform in this area and the use of pre-trial hearings, but sexual violence and rape 
um, crisis support organisations have outlined the further necessary changes which the Departments of Justice and Children need to implement immediately. These include introducing guidance for juries to address rape myths and providing free legal advice and information for anyone reporting or considering reporting any type of sexual offence. There is a clear need for a significant strategy on improving broad understanding of sexual consent. This involves evidence-based sexual and relationship education in all schools, compulsory consent classes in further and higher education, but also means uh, reaching adult groups using existing organisations to help adults understand issues of consent and abuse. Here it is important to note that sexual assault does not have to involve being uh, restrained or penetration. It is any sexual act that you are forced into against your will. This needs to be understood by all people and most importantly by our state services. Speaking at the Justice Committee recently, Deirdre Kenny of One in Four explained how in relation to cases of rape and sexual assault that the law is applied to the crime but very little attention is paid to how the system interacts with the personal impact of that crime. We need radical change to ensure our legal system and state services are victim-centred in all instances of sexual, domestic and gender-based violence. And briefly, Kian Corla, I think in rural areas sometimes um, the way people re report and seek help in these situations is very different. For example, in the past, if you were presenting as homeless in a rural area, you go to your local community welfare officer. Due to the increased demand on that on account of the homelessness crisis, people now have to go um, to the local housing authority. So to give one example in West Cork, you would have to go uh, from Clonakilty or from Castownbear to Clonakilty and there isn't even a bus service to there. Whereas before you could always go to your um, community welfare officer. Um, and recently there's been a proposal to move the family courts out of West Cork and into the city, which means somebody seeking a domestic violence order would have to travel potentially two hours and may not have transport. Thank you, Ken. Thank Crawley. you, Deputy Kearns. Now